Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. So in today's video, I thought it'd be fun to do a full face using cream products. There has been so many cream launches this year and I cannot be more excited about that. I love cream products. I'm really excited to be trying these out specifically. These are the new Smashbox Always On Cream Shadows. I haven't been excited for a Smashbox product in so, so long. I think the last time I was intrigued by something was when they launched their gray lipstick and <laughs> that was probably like five years ago now it feels like I'm very intrigued so I'm gonna be using these today and a few older things and a few newer things so before we get into it I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already it means so much to me and let's get to it the first thing I'm going to be applying is the rare beauty primer this one is very illuminizing and I did try this combo yesterday because I tried to film this video yesterday and it was just a disaster um, I was just feeling a little bit low for some reason and most of the footage was me just staring into nothing thinking my thoughts but I really like the combination of these few products I applied so I love this primer because it's very glow giving but it's also very see-through so it doesn't look really fake or tin man like at all it just looks very natural looking as if you had like a skin oil on without being really oily so it's oily skin safe <laughs> so now for my foundation I'm going to be going in with the Sephora s clean glowing skin foundation I'm using the shade number seven it's been a while since I used this but I do really adore this one I feel like it looks good all the time even when I have rougher skin days which by the way I have been really proud of my skin recently so I'm planning on filming an updated skincare routine since my routine has been really working and I think another big reason on why my acne has super calmed down is because I don't eat a lot of cheese every day throughout quarantine I was definitely eating a little more cheese than I should have been I was eating it at pretty much every meal I was like charcuterie all the time please it was my way to cope but I have since cut out a lot of my cheese intake and it's obviously really helping. I started ordering my groceries online so I don't have to wear a mask as much. I pretty much just stay home at all times now. The only time I've left is when I went to get my hair tightened and my roots done. I just really like the combo of those two products together. I feel like they make such a nice finish. I'm just gonna add a little bit more over here. So now for my concealer, I'm gonna be going in with a little bit of my Pat McGrath concealer. And I'm using the shade L7. Let me see if that's the current shade for, I think that'll be fine. I'm just gonna add two little blurbs because this stuff is highly pigmented, so you only need a touch for it to go. With my super off day yesterday, I had I struggle so hard with those days where I want them to be productive days and then they turn out to just be kind of a fail. I always struggle with relaxing. I always feel like I should be doing something or, you know, like I never can calm my boobs. What? I can never calm my boobas. <laughs> So yesterday I really tried, so I binged a little bit of Peaky Blinders, and I am so in love with Thomas Shelby. I cannot. He's so problematic and such a brat, but I have to marry him tomorrow. Anyways, I'm just gonna set a little bit of my under eyes just right under here, just because all concealers always settle into those lines. It's just because of my eye shape. Um, so I am cheating a little bit. So please forgive me, but I'm just putting it right here and I won't be touching any powder again. So now for my bronzer, I'm going to be going in with the Tarte Breezy Cream Bronzer and I'm using the lighter shade and I'm gonna be applying it with, of course, my sadly discontinued Airbrush Precision Foundation brush and I'm gonna go in and tap it on first. I've been using my Huda Beauty Tan Tour a lot recently again so it's fun to switch it up. I do really love this one too though. It's very nice and blendable. I think I do prefer the Huda Beauty one just because it is so much more blendable and I do enjoy the tone a little bit more. But this one is 
really nice as well. It has more of a glow running through it. I just got zoned out there for a moment. I was definitely thinking about Thomas again. Who have you been crushing on recently? I'd love to know. Back on the Peaky Blinders, I have no idea what's going on in the show. It's definitely a show I'm gonna have to restart right after I finish it because sometimes when he's on, I just hear like Charlie Brown's parents talking, you know, like I just look at him and I fall in love. But anyways, <laughs> for my highlighter, I don't know which one I want to use. I pulled these two out that I haven't used in a very long time. The Marc Jacobs deodorant, AKA their Spotlight Glow Stick, or the Terracotta Skin Illuminizer from Guerlain. I'm just gonna quickly swatch them on my hand to see which vibe I'd prefer. I feel like this one is a little bit too deep for me at the moment, and that one is a little too icy for me at the moment. Should I mix them just for fun? I wasn't planning on doing that, but I think I might. I'm gonna mix them up on the back of my hand. I've never done this before. How exhilarating. I'm just going to rub this stick on the back of my hand till I melt some down, and then I'm gonna do the same just beside that with the Marc Jacobs so I don't cross-contaminate anything on the actual stick. And then I'm gonna take my favorite brush here, the Moda Pro Glow, and I'm just going to mix and mix and mix and mix and have fun. Okay, I think that's a color that I really like. Okay, so I'm gonna just paint it on first. Ooh, okay, I actually really like that. And then I'm going to buff it in a little bit better. That is the beauty of cream products, that it's so fun to customize and mix them up together to create your own shade. You definitely don't need to go out and buy these two products to make this. I feel like there's a lot of other cream products that can get this kind of color, but if you have a few cream formulas in your collection, mix them up, it's really fun. So now for my blush. Actually, I don't know if I'm gonna be applying blush right now, just because I don't know which color I'm going to be using on my eyes. So I think I'm just going to quickly do my brows. I'm actually gonna be doing my brows on camera today because I pulled out my beloved Flower Beauty Bubble Brow. Look how much I've used this. I haven't used this in a long, long time. I needed to save what I had in this pan. This is one of my most favorite brow products of all time and they discontinued it. I'm gonna pour some of my water into the cap. Mm, this is gonna be a disaster since this is a huge bottle and I've had quite a bit of caffeine, so control is minimal. Ah, I didn't spill anything. That's a lot of water, I don't need that much. I'm just gonna dampen my spoolie. I didn't wanna dip my spoolie in my water bottle. I feel like that's pretty nasty, but I have done that before. I really loved how my brows looked in my Gucci Beauty video, but sadly it did not last. Like, I wonder if it was just the way I used that Jason Wu product. I'm gonna have to play around with that one a little bit more, but I wanted to use my Flower Beauty since it's nice and tinted as well. So this could be a disaster, I don't know. I have to get back at practicing doing this. I also am very interested in the ABH Brow Freeze. It's the first product that ABH has launched in a very long time that I've been intrigued by. I'm first trying to coat all of my hairs to get them to a very controllable point. This definitely has a better hold because even when I express my brows, none of them pop up. My Botox isn't updated. I haven't gotten my Botox done in like four plus years. This brow is definitely a lot thicker than this brow. And this one is a lot flatter. So I'm gonna try my best to make them look a little bit more equal. Okay, these are like plastered onto my face. This stuff is so good. It's not finished yet, but look at that. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just taking a little bit of my foundation to touch up the areas where I rubbed it off. And now I'm just gonna take my brow powder from ABH, uh-oh. Is this cheating? I don't have any like cream brow products. I forgot what I was doing. Blame it on Tommy, okay guys? Um, I'm just going to take my brow powder to define my brows a little bit with these sparser areas. So 
So the brows are on. I actually really love how they turned out today. I feel like it gave me kind of a, a lift and I love how bushy they look. But I would never strip you guys from an intermission. So I'm going to be priming my eyes off camera with the Fenty Beauty Eye Primer. So while I'm off doing that, please enjoy the intermission. Okay, so now it's time for the most exciting part, well for me anyways. I'm gonna be using one of these things, the Smashbox Always On Cream Shadows. They reached out and they asked me to pick out three shades that I see myself using the most. So I picked uh, Olive, Grage, and Sienna. I'll quickly swatch them on the back of my hand so we can get a feel for the color. So here they are swatched very loosely on my hand here. So of course this is Sienna, Grage, and Olive. This gives me Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette vibes. Oh, but this one's really pretty too. This one's really nice for every day, but I'm, I'm leaning more towards one of these guys. I'm wearing green right now. I'm drinking a new matcha. Should I do the green? This is kind of complimentary to green too. I'm gonna go for olive today. It's really hard to choose though. So I'm gonna squirt some on the back of my hand. Oh, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Whee! I'm gonna take this flat yet fluffy brush. This is the Moda SMI Shader Brush. And I'm gonna grab on some product. It feels really nice and creamy. So I'm going to first lay it onto my lid first. And then I'm gonna take a fluffier brush to kind of blend it out. This looks like pea soup. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna add another layer to build that up. This is a little sheer, looked a little jaundice -y. Very easy to blend so far. You get a lot of work time too, it seems like. It's blending out pretty seamlessly. These are very easy to work with actually. I think for the other eye, I'm actually gonna try Sienna because I'm not really a fan of this color just for like a one and done shade. If I was using this as like an eyeshadow base or something, I think this would, I would like this a lot more. But for one and done color, I don't know. I've decided I'm just going to trust the process, see what this looks like with mascara because I feel like that will make the world of difference. And when I have blush on, and maybe I'll change my top because I feel like these two greens are contradicting themselves. They're not complementing each other at all. They're in a fight. So I'm just gonna quickly do this eye. So here are both eyes done. I'm just gonna add a little bit of concealer into the inner corner just because it's looking a little yellow right there. So I'm just gonna add it with this little fluffy brush. This is a ColourPop E27. Comparing these to the Rare Beauty ones, I find that these ones kind of grab onto your lid texture a little bit more. These feel a little bit more drier and a little tighter, but they blend it out beautifully, very easily. They look really nice and smooth. The only area where I'm having a little issue is right here, but I think I was not really concentrating on my blending here. This eye turned out a lot better and the shade ranges are very different. Like the Rare Beauty ones are more flirty and very soft, very fleshy colors. And with the Smashbox one, they have very bold shades. They're more adventurous and there's more of them as well. There's how many here? There's 15 shades in the Smashbox formula and five in the Rare Beauty. But I think that turned out quite nicely. I don't know, I'm still not sold on the color yet, but the mascara can change that all. So I'm just gonna quickly curl my lashes real quick and we'll get on to mascara. So now for my mascara, I'm gonna be using the Bite Beauty Upswing Full Volume Mascara. And I have been trying this out here and there and I haven't been sold on it yet. Just because the brush is so massive, I find it really hard to control. The formula is nice though. I haven't experienced any crumbling at all. I just always hit the brush on my lid or I always get transfer. It's really, really hard to control. I wish the brush was smaller. And also like, I feel like I don't have small eyes. So if I did have smaller eyes, I think it would even be more of a struggle. 
but the formula is lovely. I feel like it's very comparable to the NARS Climax Extreme. See, like it always touches my lid no matter what I do. I can't grab my lashes the way I usually do without it transferring everywhere. The effect though is pretty worth it maybe. Like my lashes look incredible today. And for my bottom lashes, I'm just going to quickly apply some of my M Cosmetics Pick Me Up. So here are the eyes all finished. What do you guys think? I don't know yet. I did change my top because the girls were fighting and I had enough. I do like it a lot better now that the green has been condensed, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm still not super sold. I did have to add another little layer to my lid here where the mascara touched just because it wouldn't scrape off. The mascara kind of sunk into the shadow. So I feel like it's a little uneven right now, but lesson learned. Maybe the next time I'll put like a little post-it note when I'm applying the mascara. But anyways, here are the eyes all finished. What do you guys think? I think the lashes look amazing though. Definitely trust the process. <laughs> so now for my blush, I'm going to be using one of the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable blushes. I feel like this peachy one would be kind of fun with the eye. This is the Nearly Apricot. That or nearly neutral, which I feel like looks a little too gray next to this green. I think the peachy one it is. This I used nearly neutral in my other video. Those are the two colors I have been using the most, nearly neutral and nearly apricot. So I'm quickly going to apply it with my Smith 115 brush. And I still haven't figured out if what formula I like from Rare the most. I feel like they all are quite different from each other but I feel like maybe I'd wear these ones the most since they're a little bit more sheer. And sometimes I get nervous with the amount of pigment that the liquid versions have. I feel like these are a lot more user-friendly and approachable, but at the same time, the other ones have such fun colors too. So I'm torn. This is seriously the best blush, cream blush and liquid blush brush to apply. It makes it so feathery. I don't think that sentence made sense. So now moving on to lips. I wanted to use one of the Fenty Beauty cream lip glosses. I kind of feel like which one would work best? Probably Fenty Glow, which I have some thoughts, new thoughts about these, which I will explain in a moment. So I'm first going to apply my M Cosmetics Fawn Blur lip liner just because I wanted my lip line to be a little bit softened. I'm going to be using the shade Fenty Glow in the cream formula, so that's the one with no shimmer. So I have been using these quite a bit recently and I have noticed a few things. I find that this formula settles into the cracks of your lips very easily and they almost bunch up, I would say, around your lip line. Like all of the color really settles and I find that it looks a little patchy at times, especially the more you wear it. When you first apply it, it looks stunning, but once you start talking and moving your lips, it starts to migrate to the edges, which I do find it can be avoidable by like really scraping the excess off of the tube here. But I find that you lose a lot of the pigmentation and the effect as well. Like you just have to add a tiny, tiny, tiny a bit. So it just looks like a satin on the lips. You can't build it up till it looks very glossy. I just wish that this formula was a little bit better refined, I think, especially for being more of a pigmented gloss, but it is totally avoidable if you just apply a tiny, tiny bit. Just wanted to update you on my thoughts about these, but I think that color looks good. These glosses for me definitely don't beat the Tower 28 Milky Collection. Those are still my number ones. So here is the finished final look. Let me know what you guys think. I really love how a majority of things look. I love my skin finish. I think it looks very nice and glowy without being greasy at all. I love my bronzer and my blush and highlighter combo. I think that turned out very beautiful. Love the lips as well. The eyes, I still am not super sold on this color. I feel like it doesn't super complement 
the color of my skin. I love the way it looks like on my eyes. I'm curious to see how these play as eyeliners or maybe even bases for other eyeshadows to go on top of. I feel like these other two colors I would use more often than these ones. I'll definitely have to update you on how these wear throughout the day, but I love the lashes. I am kind of sold on the mascara, even though I have to be very, very careful with the application. I think I can work around it. I feel like the effect is really gorgeous. But let me know what you guys think of today's makeup. I think that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful and fun. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link everything I used in today's video in the description down below, as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.